In this video, I build a reloading bench out of two by fours. Part one is the base and the bench itself, and then part two is the shelving and the beadboard and back. I started by picking out the straightest boards I could, and I got these from Home Depot. They're kiln dried. They're 104 and a half, and I believe they're only like 250 each, maybe a little less. I need it eight foot long, but this way I'll have enough to cut off at the end and. Uh, Maybe even make it a little bit longer. I'm going to get as long with the bench as I can. The width right now is about 19 and a half. I uh, ran these through the planer on both sides. And that just, I think, allows it to glue up better. It's kind of an optional step, but if not, you have that top you have to deal with. The next step is to put biscuits in here. I'm going to do, I think, four or five. And the way I do this is I got it clamped up and the ends together. Some of the boards are higher or lower in the end, but that doesn't really matter right now because I'll clamp those down when I glue it. And then with the biscuit cutter, I'm going to come from the top and they'll be the same height. And what I want to do is get a straight edge like this, and I just want to draw out where I'm going to put my biscuits. So I'll put one right here, and then one on this other end. Not too close to the edge though, because I might be cutting that off. And then probably just two in the middle, I'll probably just go with four here. And something else I like to do is the end boards I will mark. So I know that one's an edge. And that one's an edge. That way I don't accidentally put it. I'll put a couple spots. I don't want to accidentally put a biscuit and then I'll have to fill the hole. And then I also like to do a squiggly line. And that way I could just tell that that's the order these boards will go back together. Maybe I'll put one of this in too, like that. And so I line those up and then I know I'm good. My biscuit's cut. And the first thing I'm going to do is uh, spread some glue. And with this, less is more. And I've been past the dress. Maybe I'll do that again. I just pour it on. Just tight bond three. I want to fill the biscuit holes. too much it's going to squish out everywhere. My first time using this little silicone thing it's working pretty well. What I'll do is I'll just pop a biscuit in each hole and I like to glue the other side also the same way. And it's still probably too much glue. One of these days maybe I'll learn. What I'll do is take that Just get it close because I'm going to clamp it up. I got it all glued up. I ran out of that Type Bond 3, so I switched to an indoor outdoor Gorilla glue. And I used parchment paper on the ends so I could put these boards across and clamp them to kind of hold it a little bit straighter right here on the side. And then also put a bunch of clamps on it all the way down. I got 21 clamps on this right now. The glue says wait 30 minutes at least, but for this type of glue up, I like to wait 24 hours if not longer. I'm going out of town this weekend, so it's going to actually, I'm going out for a long weekend, so it's going to be a little bit longer. The glue dripping off, you can wipe it off with a towel, but I found with that uh, handheld joiner, it's not really necessary. You just waste towels because the first pass, it'll take that glue right off. So it's been about two weeks now, and uh, you can see all the glue is dripping, but we'll make quick work of that right now. Oh, this one's heavy. And you can tell already, well, there's glue on it, but it's already, you know, it's warped. But that... So the first thing you do is use a little card scraper, and the way you do it is you take your fingers like that and you bend them. And... So all I've done is knocked off the, the high glue spots. 
I got a straight edge right here. And you can see that right here and here, it's really low. This bench is 19 and a half inches wide and my uh, bench top planer won't fit that. So I have a couple options. One is to use this jack plane and it would take a long time to get through all this. It's just right now, I mean, let's see if I can get it. It's not going to be taking off much at all. And then the other option is to go with this power hand planer. And this is the one I'm going to go with at first. And then I'll actually use this jack plane and I'll be going kind of uh, diagonal to get the, the, the twist out of it. This one I'm going to be going just uh, lengthways with it. So I want to go over a couple tips and tricks. The first one for this is, and they're pretty much all these power planners should be about the same, is you want to adjust your thickness of your cut. And what that adjustment does is it moves this bed up and down. The next thing is, is when you come to the edge, if you push down on it, it will add a lot of snipe and it will dig trenches in the edge of your board. So what you really need to do is when you're using this, you want to put the weight all on the back bed here, which is the stationary flat bed, and then the blades are right here. So you keep it all on the back and then go over it before you lift off, making sure you put pressure on and keeping this as flat as possible. With this one, I'm going to do a full pass from one end to the other. You see I held it, pushing pressure on the back, but mainly uh, took off glue that pass. I'll do a couple more passes to where it's down to wood. So I didn't really cover starting off. Now this one has a little foot in the back, so when you set it down, the blade won't touch into the, the wood, it won't dig in. So you need the back to kind of uh, be on the wood, otherwise it will dig in up front. So when I'm starting it, I am, Put it on there to about where the foot clicks and then I'm holding down. So my blade is about right here. So what I do is I'll do passes this way and then I'll turn around and do passes that way. And that gets the ends, keeps them about where they should be. Now I got most of the glue off, but it is far from straight at this point. At high spots on the both sides, it's kind of cupped in like that. And then if I start doing diagonals. I'll see that it probably has a twist in, which is hard to tell until you get a long straight edge on it. So for this one, I'll go through and I'll start seeing where I'm high, like on these edges, and I'll start hitting them a little bit harder. And I took the bagger off because it fills in like one pass. So you can see it clicked right there. That's where that little foot is. And I'll just keep doing that until I get it flat. So with that electric one, I was going a little bit, going a little bit and checking. And right now, I kind of want to go knock off some high spots. And I'm going to do that with my uh, hand planer. And then I'll come back with the electric some more. So brush it off and... So got a high spot there. It's looking pretty good. I mean, it's just a low spot there. And it's definitely low there. Now where I have it where I like it, this is the bottom and I'm just going to hit it quick with the belt sander with some, uh, I believe this is 50 grit on it. I'm going to hit it light and quick. The scratching of that 50 grit makes for a really good glide coat, or guide coat I should say. So you can actually see if there is high and low spots. So check how flat it is. I have a long 72 inch straight edge. And I'm going from corner to corner. And you can see there's a little, if I put my finger behind, a little gap right there. I'll go this way with it. 
See, it doesn't, there's not any gap. So, that means the corner over there is higher up. And um, that's one way to check to see if it's twisted at all. So what I'll do is I'll work on that corner a little bit more until I get that out of it. Um, it's probably good enough for a bench right now, but even with that little bit right there, I don't know if you can really see, it's not very much at all. That's enough to actually cause it to rock. See, it's just barely taking some off the end, but that's all it has to be to make that difference. First, I'll start with 60 grit on the palm sander, and then I'll probably roll it over and do the other side, start flattening that. So I got two pieces of scrap wood underneath this now. What I plan on doing is turning them up like this. And sanding these edges here on both sides. It's gotten fairly smooth just going over it with the palm sander and 60 grit. And next I'm going to hit it with 100 grit, 150, and then 220. And I got most of the scratches out so it should go much faster with those grits. I'm just going to do this one side, just the, the top side with that. The bottom is plenty smooth. So I got it sanded with the 60 grit. And before I go on and do the finished sanding, I'm going to go on the front edge and round it over with this router bit. And I looked at both sides to see if the grain looked better on one side than the other because the edge might be seen more than anything else. Um, especially when I have presses mounted to it and my reloading or my reloading and cleaning stuff on it. So I decided to go with this edge because I thought the grain might look a little bit better. They're about the same though. And the back edge I am just going to leave perfectly uh, square because it's going to go against the wall. That router bit left a nice edge on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and start sanding it and I'll hit the edge just with the sander as I'm going through the grits. Well I have it sanded smooth and the next thing I'm going to do is clean it with some mineral spirits. And what that's going to do is I'm going to get all the dust out of it. And I just have an old sock I'm using as a rag. After that, I'm going to turn on its side and clean my uh, routed edge, which will be the front and the bottom. So this other side will be actually on the bottom. And I'm going to apply tongue oil. And that way I could cover three sides and two ends at the same time and then most of the bottom. I'm going to put probably two or three coats. Um, they take 24 hours between each coat. So that's why I want to put it on in. So I'll put a couple coats. I have the first coat uh, on there and buffed out. And now I just need to wait 24 hours for that to dry. And I can do the second coat. So I haven't been filming much because it's really windy today. and It's kind of loud. I decided to make the bench 42 inches off the ground. That way I have plenty of storage underneath, and I can also stand or sit with a adjustable like bar stool type chair. I uh, anchored the 2x4s to the back of the wall here, so that will be supporting a lot of the weight. And then I also put in just three legs because I didn't want to get in the way of my storage. I then put through uh, a couple cross braces, and those have a metal angle. And off of the 2x4s on the wall there, also put metal angle braces to kind of support the shelves because they'll have a lot of weight. But they're going to be made out of uh, 2x10s. The next thing I'm going to do is take the 2x10s and push them up against the wall and mark them so that I'll be able to cut them. I use a sawzall to cut it out, and I cut it oversized on purpose so it would fit in there without a problem. Because there's only a couple inches right here, I'm going to put a 2x4 underneath right here and attach them to the wall studs so that uh, it has more support on the back of this shelf. I'll probably also put in some kind of metal bracing underneath these. Now the real test is to see if I can stand on it, put all my weight on the middle here. Yeah, I don't feel any bowing. I think this will do. The bench is done. And I got it secured down with some of these in the back corners and these uh, wider, skinnier ones in the front. As you can see, it's between the bubbles. I'm really happy with that. I'm going to wrap up part one. Make sure to click here or here to subscribe and also to watch part two. Thanks for watching. Bye.